Um, Samad, so we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, patient growth and staffing. And one thing that you had mentioned was um, treatment plan follow-ups. So what's, what's some advice that you would give uh, about patient re-engagement? So the, the patient re-engagement is a whole topic. You know, I, I work with few clients where the clients were looking at, you know, this, this practice is sitting on, you know, 3,500 patients and they wanted to add more patients and the cost of adding each patient for them was huge, like two, three hundred dollars, maybe, or maybe sometimes six hundred dollars to add a new patient. And he didn't have budget. And uh, I was sitting with him and trying to understand what, what do we do. But I, I looked at something that was very strange is like he has thirty five hundred patients, but twenty five hundred of them have never came back in the last one year. So I asked him, did you try to get them back? And he said, no. And we started looking at it and I said, you know, first we got to close the back door there. <laughs> people are coming and people are leaving and we don't know how to get them back. And the easiest thing you can do is, uh, so we created an entire campaign around just getting those 2,500 people back. And uh, that helped me write this book. And uh, I, I work with a few clients. Uh, we surveyed like 20 clients to understand how many more doctors are there who actually are not looking at who's not coming back because you give a treatment plan, they got, they got the cleaning done, you give them a treatment plan and they're, they're gone, right? And, and uh, I think it's important to understand, did they just forget about their cavities? Did they just forget about their root canal? It can be they're just forgetting. They're probably going somewhere else if you're not following up, right? So what we did is that we did a study on about, we talked about 20 offices. They all said that we have 2,000, 4,000, 3,000, some patients sitting in their, in their database that has never came back. So what we did is that we, we, we made a strategy on, we said that, okay, how can we get them back? And we made a calendar for, you know, first month was just setting up their campaigns to get the, getting those people back. It's like uh, text messaging, email marketing, advanced social media strategies with Google and Facebook and those things and trying to get to them. There's also some postcard advertising we tried. I think uh, that your experience actually speaks. Uh, one thing that I think you mentioned on that, that the cost of impression on social media is so cheap compared to cost of impression with a postcard, right? So there's a big difference. It's like 34, 35 cents, 30 cents versus what? Is like and for so a penny you can get a lot of yeah. yeah. So so we, we we tried that and we saw that this guy was getting more than between forty and sixty patients each month just by going back to them and reminding them that hey. I'm here. What happened? <laughs> so we, we we saw that having an online scheduling helped him. Having uh, getting him get, getting you got to contact people like three to seven times between three times to seven times just because of so many messaging that's happening these days. There needs to be some consistency in your message and what are you asking for? Just sending an email and text message saying that hey, Doctor Khan was looking for you to see if you can come back to yeah. see if he can help you out with your with, you know with the treatment you're looking for. So uh, we were able to do that and we were able to bring back forty to sixty patients every month uh, for like a few months and uh, th this is, that's just one case study. But there are a few more clients that we work with and we're seeing ton of a ton of uh, success in just closing your back door i call it closing the back door just because and this is it's 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 a lot cheaper to bring in people back because they know who you are they know how your parking looks like they know who your front office staff is all that stuff they already know you so why don't why don't we just you know work with those people and 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 i think it's a treasure that's sitting and a lot of people needs to uh, value that and, and bring back their you know the patients who haven't come back for more than a year or so no that's that's really really good samad because there are so many practices that they don't quite know how to go after that. But you're right. You Not only do they know the practice, but the practice has all their contact information. Right. And so leveraging that to their advantage with the message. And I tell my clients a lot of times, be vulnerable. You know, it's it shows that you're human. And, mm -hmm. and so it comes to marketing and understanding your audience that oftentimes you can get a lot more information when they see that your walls are down and you're not arrogant and you're being vulnerable in the sense of asking for feedback, uh, oftentimes in a recall campaign. And, and I, I am so excited to read your book uh, because I just, I didn't realize that I was going to meet the man who wrote the book on it, um, <laughs> but, but I, I want to read it because you're exactly right. It's so much cheaper. You have all that information, you have all the tools, but is your message correct? And sometimes that message needs to be something like, you know, you came in on this day of 2020 when the world was in chaos. Was there something that we did that offended you or was uncomfortable for you that made you not want to come back or has life just been busy? When you make an assumption that you're the one that messed up for them not to come. You're not staking blame and you're not, you're not saying I did something wrong, but you're opening a conversation for them. How often did, is it the boyfriend, girlfriend? Oh, no, no, Samad, it's not you. It's me. You know, and that's what the patients will come back with sometimes. No, 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 it wasn't you. My life's been busy. You're right. Let's schedule an appointment so I can put your mind at ease. And, and, and what, what we have also seen is that sometimes people forget the wife is always reminding the kids are reminding, but the guy is like, yeah, I'm busy, man. Wait. But <laughs> when he gets this message and email is like, all right, it's time to do it. And, and we found that out. There's like one funny guy. He, he messaged the practice and they, they showed it to me. He's like, oh, thank God you reminded me. My son has been asking for it for two weeks now. <laughs> okay. All right. So those things happen, right? So it's just sometimes people need reminders. And, yeah. and uh, I have heard from some of the practices that, hey, we got recalls. Like, I don't know if you understand that recalls don't work a lot of times. And, and it may work for some people, but recalls is just for like people who are on schedule for cleaning. You're trying to get back them to cleaning. It's it's not always, you, sometimes you got you to gotta take over a uh, little more than just uh, sending them an email. And uh, the good thing is that there are people 
like uh, Gargle and other people who are there who can help you with the campaigns. It's just like we also help them, but uh, they we are working with the people like you, you know, like you to help them with this so that they can bring in. They're, they're, I mean, it's the cheapest way to bring grow your practice. I think is is because you have five thousand in a neighborhood. You will in a in a in a bigger city. I have seen like people five miles, six miles, twenty five thousand people, thirty thousand people. You don't have you're going to work with the same people. You're not going to find new people every few months. Maybe people are moving here and there, but not a lot, right? So you still have neighborhoods that that your neighborhood is is, is your home, and you just have to get them back. Yep. Awesome. Well, this has been a great conversation, guys. I appreciate uh, all the information and the insight that both of you have that both of you have given. Again, I'd like to remind anyone watching or listening, we've got Samad here, the CEO and founder of SRS Web Solutions, uh, as well as Jake, the Executive Vice President of Client Strategy and co-founder of Gargle. Again, appreciate both of your time, uh, your effort, and everything that you've given us today. Thank, Thank you, Zach. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you so much, guys.